that. What's in a name? Uh, my name is Rod. Usually when I answer the phone at work, it's, this is physical therapy, Rod speaking. Always on the other end. Well, Rodney. And it's like, well, no, I told you my name was Rod. My, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So that's the way I like to think of my name. Uh, but your name, what, what does it mean to other people? Sometimes we give people a name because we have a friend or maybe a family member who is just so kind, so gracious, so loving, so wonderful. That's what I want my child to be. And so we will name them after somebody. Um, <clears throat> I often, and you, I know you've all heard this, I'm sweet, tender, kind, thoughtful, loving, intelligent, good-looking, and humble. <laughs> all the things I really wish that I was. Trying to be upbeat, wanting other people to, in, in a sense, get a little smile out of life is uh, part of the reason why I started saying things like that. But yet when I look in the mirror, that is not necessarily what I see. <clears throat> Jacob was a twin, and I remembered your sermon from the twin. Uh, but this is a different twin, Jacob and Esau. And uh, Jacob's name came about because he stuck his arm out. I think it was an arm. And then it came back in. Now, I don't know how you do this because I've never seen a baby born. Uh, when we went through our third child, I tried to go in, but I was the patient. <laughs> I did not do well when I saw the blood coming. Uh, anyway. So Jacob stuck his arm out, came back in, then Esau came out, and Jacob was hanging on to his foot. Uh, they named him the supplanter, somebody who's trying to get what somebody else has. Not necessarily stealing but wanting what somebody else either was or had. And Jacob listened to the stories of his grandfather, Abraham, to his father, Isaac, and he wanted the blessing of having the Messiah come through him. Esau could care less. Esau was the hunter. He was the, the camper. Well, I do an RV, but anyway. Um, he was the outdoor person. He was the one that would go on trips to, to find game and bring it back. And then, Dad, look what I brought you. He's carrying this deer or whatever. I have no idea what he brought. Probably wasn't a veggie dog. Um, <laughs> But anyway, uh, he was the strong, outdoorsy type. Jacob was the cooker. Jacob was the one who loved the flowers, tended the garden, took care of the sheep. Uh, Rachel, Rachel, Rebecca, Rachel, well, anyway. No, Rachel's the one he married. So Rebecca, the mother, loved Jacob. Wouldn't call him a mama's boy, because if you've ever taken care of sheep, you know it takes somebody strong. Uh, but <clears throat> the angel, when Rebecca was pregnant with the two, had said, the younger will be the one that is going to actually be the leader. That is the priest of the family. And so 
Rebecca always remembered that. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. But Isaac was over here. <laughs> My strong boy. He's going to be the one. Yeah. As time came and Jacob became blind and uh, couldn't even tell who his sons were, they, uh, he was ready to give the blessing. It meant something. Not, thank you for the food, Lord. Thank you for the blessings that we have. But this was the blessing. This was the blessing that said, you, through your descendants, your people is going to come the Messiah. Isaac was ready to give it to Esau. He was the oldest. He was in line for it. Rebekah said, that's not what the angel said, honey. But like most of us men, we have that uh, problem with these uh, things that hang out here. We don't necessarily hear what you're saying. Or if we hear it, we choose to ignore it. That was this situation. So Rebecca decides, let's go get a sheep. We'll make daddy his favorite meal. We'll put some hair on your arms because Esau was really hairy. I don't know why they didn't call him that. Maybe that's what Esau means. I don't know. But anyway, <clears throat> so they're going to trick Isaac into giving the blessing to the correct person according to the angel. But mom, I don't think, I, I mean, I'm not hairy like Esau. And I don't cook what Esau brings to dad. That's okay, son. I got it covered. So finally, Jacob decides, okay, I'll go along with the plan. The plan worked. Don't want to tell you it didn't work. The plan worked. But Esau was a little upset. In fact, he was very upset. And the news was, when dad dies, so will you. Jacob was going to be history too. What happens to the blessing? What happens to the Messiah? Jacob began running for his life. Esau was the hunter. This wasn't somebody who could, who would just, you know, when I get a chance, you've had it, buddy. This was the hunter. Jacob was now the hunted. And he ran for his life. And Isaac had again blessed Jacob before he left. But he says, I want you to go get a wife from your mother's family. You need somebody who believes in God. Who trusts God. So I want you to go back home to your mother's people and get a wife. Jacob's on the run. Every twig that broke, he jumped. Could it be Esau? Everything that moved, could it be Esau? He was scared and alone. Now, Jacob feels guilty. He's starting to feel what sin does to you. He was the deceiver.
He had lost confidence in his father's God, in himself. He knew he wasn't worthy to be part of the blessing. He was scared and lonely and didn't know what to do. Didn't want to pray because he wasn't worthy for God even to hear what he had to say. But that's all he could do was to plead for God's mercy. And somehow God, in your heart of hearts, would you just let me know that you hear my prayer? Have you ever been there? That's where Jacob was. Didn't trust himself. Wasn't sure God liked him anymore. So he does pray. He realizes that he's brought this all on himself. There's nobody else to blame, not like Adam. The woman you gave me wasn't like Eve, the serpent you made. I've done it to myself. There's nobody else to blame but myself. God can't. The blessing that I just received, can God really bless me? So Jacob goes to sleep that night, and God, in his mercy, gives us a song. We are climbing. There you go. We're climbing Jacob's ladder. Just what Jacob needed. A savior. Somebody who could change his heart, could change his characteristics, could change the way he thought about things, the way he acted. He saw Jacob's ladder. We saw Jacob's ladder. Angels going back and forth represented Christ. When Jacob woke up, God, in his mercy and in his love, had told Jacob, I'm with you, son. You've got a long way to go, but I'm with you. I'll protect you. I'll be with you. There's going to be many things happen to you that you don't know right now, but I want you to know that I'm with you. You are part of the blessing. So Jacob wakes up, gets going, goes to his mother's family. You know, there's something about you women that just turn us on. He gets to a well and finds a little shepherd girl. And this um, gardener, this shepherd, doesn't take a whole group of shepherds to move the stone. Jacob looks at Rachel and moves the stone. Waters the sheep, goes to Laban's house. Laban says, yeah, you can stay with us. In fact, within just a couple of weeks, Laban realizes, 
I found somebody to tend my sheep. And so Jacob says, but I'd like something for tending your sheep. I'd like Rachel. And it says that the seven years, and you know, today, and I did it. I came out of school broke. I had no money. I wasn't sweet, tender, kind, thoughtful, loving, you know, and all those things either. Uh, I got my wife, and, and we just didn't have much. Rachel worked, or Jacob worked, seven years for his bride. But it says it was like but a moment. How many of us love our wives like that? All right, good. We need to love our wives like Jacob loved Rachel. We need to have those inner feelings. I'm willing to work for you. Not getting paid in a sense, just so that I can have you as my wife. And if we could be that way as husbands toward our wives, how much heartache would be dissipated. The woman you gave me, I'll tell you what, Lord. No, not that way. But caring, willing to go to any length, to take the companion that's in your heart and take them home for this cause. You know, this wasn't in the sermon, sorry. For this cause will a man leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife. Anyway, that's, that's Jacob. After 20 years, many things happen. Jacob now has four wives, 10 children, and thousands and thousands of animals. But he's tired of Laban, his father-in-law, who keeps cheating him. And he goes to God. He does, he's just not sure what to do, you know. But he goes to God and he says, you know, I'm a little upset here. I don't think daddy is being very nice to me or my wives, grandchildren. What do you think I ought to do? And God comes and says, go back home. Go back to the land that I am going to give as the blessing to your descendants. The blessing isn't over here. The blessing is over here that I promised to Abraham, your grandfather, and to Isaac, your father, and that I am also promising to you to your descendants, to your children, the land of promise. Not a desert. It was called the land that was flowing with milk and honey. It had its problems at times. But it was the land flowing with milk and honey. And God says, I want you to go back there where I can really bless you. And so Jacob says, but goes to Laban and says, I want to go back home. Is that okay with you? I mean, a dutiful son. Wouldn't you call that a dutiful son? Is it okay if I take my wives and the children and I want to go back to where my family is? <clears throat> and Laban says, uh-uh. I've learned that God is blessing me 
through you. And you're not going anywhere. It wasn't just, I don't, I would rather you stay here. It was, you're not going. You're not leaving. Because I want to get richer. And so Jacob again goes to God and says, I don't know what to do. I can't flee from him because he's too strong. What do I do? God says, I'll make a way. So it just so happened that Laban needed to go take care of some business someplace. Aha! <laughs> Now's my chance. So Jacob picks up his wives, kids, tents, maidservants, manservants, cattle, sheep, oxen. He had tons. And he took off. Laban didn't hear about it for three days. It took him seven more days to catch up with Jacob, and Laban was not happy. I told you you couldn't go. Have you ever heard that? I didn't want you to do that. Jacob's in trouble. But he's got a God who can take care of any problem. And he gives a dream to Laban and says, don't say anything to Jacob. I've been blessing you. Don't go to Jacob and say, you're coming back with me. Don't tell him yes or no. Laban could have forced Jacob to go back. That wasn't part of God's plan. God was taking care of his part. Jacob was taking care of his part. So now, Jacob is free from Laban. What's ahead? The hunter. The hunter's up ahead. I got rid of one problem. But now they look at a bigger problem. And the bigger problem has revenge written all over it. Have you ever met somebody that's really angry and you tried to quiet them down or calm them down. It's like putting your hand between two dogs and saying, okay, guys, let's separate. You get hurt. Isaac, or Isaac, uh, Esau saw only red. Now's my chance. I'm going to get even with you, buddy. You think you got the blessing. It's not going to do you one bit of good. Esau was coming with a band of 400. Jacob had four wives, 10 children. Oh, big army. We can protect ourselves. No. They were terrified. I don't know if you've ever been terrified. I don't think I have. I've been scared. But I don't think I have ever been terrified. But it mentions that they were terrified. But the message was, I want you to continue on. The blessing isn't here. The blessing is over here. Jacob says, okay. They move on. Every twig that broke, every noise, could it be 
This is the end. Not yet. Jacob says, divided his family because if they attacked one part of the family, maybe the other part would get away. So he divides his family into two. And then he goes to pray. To really pray. My whole family could be snuffed out by tomorrow because of what I did. Goes to pray. It's nighttime. He's praying, pleading with God. Sorry, here it comes. <laughs> Not just because of Esau, but because of what his sin had done to the Messiah. When he saw the ladder, he saw that the only way his sin could be forgiven was through the death of another being, and not just a being, his God, the one he worshipped. The only way his family could be saved was the Messiah. And he pleads for his wives. He pleads for his children. He pleads for the blessing. Because if the blessing doesn't come to fruition, all is lost. There he is praying and pleading. I didn't tell you I was going to do this, but anyway. A hand, when he is lonely and praying and terrified that Isaac is there, or Esau is there, a hand touches him. And immediately he stiffens and grabs the assailant, whoever it is. He has no idea. It's dark. They don't have street lights out there. And he fights with superhuman power. When you are afraid, you have more strength than what you think you could ever do. He wrestles with this being not for five minutes, not for 15 minutes, hour after hour. Could you keep that up? Jacob did because he was absolutely terrified of dying and for his family. And he begins pleading with God. Remember your promises. You told me to go back. You told me you would be with me. I know I am that sinner. I know I've done all those things. <clears throat> but God, you promised Please. He was begging, fulfill the promise that you gave to me. 
And then this being touches his hip. Pain shoots through his body. I'm thinking it probably dislocated his hip. But instead of falling to the ground, Jacob knows now who he's been fighting with. It's an angel. It's an angel of the covenant, of the blessing. Thank you, Jackie. He's been wrestling with his Redeemer, with his Savior. Jesus didn't come to scare the daylights out of him. He come to tell him in person, not just a dream. He came to him in person to tell him, Jacob, Your sins are forgiven. You've confessed them. And I've heard you. And they're forgiven. But that's not what Jacob thought when he felt that hand on his shoulder. Now he's hurting and he grabs this being even Tighter and pleads that the blessing and his family will be safe. And Jesus says, Let me go. Now, can you imagine that? Jacob has such a tight hold on a God. that could dislocate his hip, but can't get away from him. Jacob says, I won't let you go until you bless me. We're told that Jacob's time of trouble is again going to be with the Laodicean church. And guess what? We are living in that time. Are you taking God's promises? Are you learning God's promises so that when the struggle really begins... When the fight really occurs, you're prepared. That you can say, Lord, you have forgiven my sins. I have repented of those sins. I know I'm not worthy, but your promise is... And then whatever it is, your promise that you're looking for. And Jacob clung to Jesus so tightly that Jesus says, let me go. No. No. Not letting you go. Almost like Job, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. We're all going to be going through a terrifying ordeal. Some of us may already be there. But I want to tell you, we have a Savior. We have a God that we can hang on to so tightly that the blessing will come. 
but we have our part to do. We must be humbled. We must confess our shortcomings and our names. And God came to, when Jesus came, he says, you're no longer Jacob. You're no longer the deceiver. You're no longer the supplanter. You're Israel. I've been calling him wrong all these years. He's not Jacob. God changed his name. You are Israel because you have succeeded with God. I'm looking for a new name. Jesus says he's going to give us a new name. I don't know what it will be, but it will have something to do with overcoming and trusting a Savior that though we are unworthy, is more than worthy. And I want to thank you, Diana, for the songs that you picked out. They were perfect. And all they had to go on was the title of my sermon today. But they were perfect. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. And he won't. He will keep you in his arms no matter how hard the battle becomes. Our God is able to keep us. We need to grab him as Israel grabbed him and never let him go.